I didn't like this chapter. Let's just get that right out of the gate. Let's get that beat. No more beating around the bush or anything. I did not like this chapter, and we will talk about why at the end of the video. That being said, it's Griever Guys bringing you One Piece, One Piece chapter 1012 review. Let's get underway with it because there are some good things in this chapter. We start off with the Red Scabbards and them doing their whole thing. They're going to split up. Kinemon made contact with Shinobu Momonosuke. Him and Kiku are going to group together and they're going to go find Momonosuke and alongside that also find Conjuro. Apparently they think that they're going to run into Conjuro along the way because Kiku says, please allow me to finish Conjuro because I failed to do so the first time and that's why, of course, uh, Ashura Doji is seemingly no longer with us. Very, very sad uh, for a lot of people and unfortunately... They're, they're trying to break up and stuff. They do acknowledge Kiku uh, Izo, being the big brother that he is, does acknowledge Kiku's, um, you know, arm being ripped off, pretty much, and says, like, can you still fight? Like, how's your injury? Blah, blah, blah. And Kiku says, I'm a samurai through and through and stuff. So that's definitely very good. Uh, we're getting a little bit of character there. We're seeing that they're moving forward, and they're not just going to slouch around and be like, huh, well, Luffy, <laughs> Supernova's. They can take care of it. No, no, no. They're, they're still moving forward, and that's fantastic. Um, we also run into... Uh, Nekomamushi runs into uh, Shishalian. Is that how you say his name? Um, and, and the monkey and all that stuff. And they basically talk... So they sort of all decide to split up into their groups. Now, this is where Nekomamushi finds out, and this totally took me by surprise because I just realized how would he have found out? How would have he, he have known? And now he does because Pedro's dead. The Pedro death, the will of P, is still strong with this one. But as far as we're uh, to understand, Pedro is still confirmed dead. And Nekomamushi has finally been informed of this. Happened in Big Mom's territory. He sacrificed himself so Luffy and the others could escape, etc., etc. And this is where um, our little monkey guy, or it's Shishali and I, I'm not, I forget who, basically says... But uh, Wanda and uh, Carrot are right now, they're engaging the one who actually caused his death, Perospero. They're, they are, you know, they went after him and they're they're fighting him right now. But I don't know, uh, you know, I don't know how that's turning out or whatever. And But Nekomamushi now, see, because we know, because of course, Su Long with the cloud cover and all that stuff. But we know that uh, Perospero has moved on his way, that Carrot and Wanda are no match for Perospero outside of Su Long form. But Nekomamushi, on the other hand, he's going, ah, well, so, the guy who killed Pedro is on the island, huh? Crack, crack, and he's got this big cat, you know, Cheshire cat grin going on, and he's ready. So, this is a good part of the chapter. The Red Scabbers are splitting up their forces, which makes sense so they can be in different places at once, help out with the Topiropo in one area, you know, deal with Orochi, help Kine uh, help uh, Momonosuke and Shinobu and Yamato and stuff, which we do jump to after this, but... Definitely did not expect the whole, ah, Nekomamushi is going to go after the guy who killed Pedro because he's here. Like, I never really saw that coming. So that, that was interesting, and I really definitely enjoyed that. Um, the next part, I believe, is when we jump back over to, uh, as I said before, Momonosuke, Shinobu, and Yamato. Now, a lot of people love Yamato. I like Yamato. I think Yamato is really cool. And uh, But Yamato basically is just itching to fight. Like, right now, like... She's sort of like, I'm a protector, I'm Kazuki Oden, I'm the protector of Momonosuke, but at the same time, it's like, well, you'll be safe here, Can I, like, uh, I'm going to lead them away, I'll serve as bait, like, and uh, I have this decoy, and it's a little puppet thing, and just sort of hides it, like, yeah, totally a decoy, and there's a, like, listen, Shinobu explains to, uh, it's either Momonosuke or Shinobu explains to Yamato, like, look, Kanemon already is already on his way, apparently, so we should be fine here, you can go out, go kick ass sort of idea we see you can, you're, you're, you're itching you're jumping up and down in your seat Yamato you want to fight you want to fight and we want to see Yamato fight we know that Yamato while not protecting anybody is at least as strong as a Topi Ropo if not a commander level and we know this we know this I don't like to do much in the way of power scaling guys but I think we can all assume that Yamato is a, a Yonko commander level if you'll forgive me for using the term so 
seeing her going all out should be badass. Where she's headed is not actually talked about, but it sounds like she's intending to head to the rooftop to face down her father and see how Luffy's making out. Because as she runs away, she says, uh, she asks Momonosuke, how is Luffy doing? Because he can sense it and all that stuff. And he says, nothing's changed. He's losing will. He's losing a lot of strength. He's lost a lot of power, but he's, he's still fighting. But there are only two voices left up there. So Momonosuke, once again, recognizing that now it's only a one-on-one -on -one, and that's what, and Yamato sort of stops and goes, wait a minute, it's only a one-on-one, -on -one, Luffy versus my father? I need to hurry. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. So it seems like Yamato's intention is to go to the rooftop. So that's going to be extremely interesting. I like that idea. I didn't really see that. It makes total sense from a, from a, a character structure standpoint, but I just didn't see it sort of coming. Um, and Momonosuke decides that this is a perfect opportunity to sit down and start reading Odin's journal. So there is that. Um, we're going to skip uh, because I know, I, I believe, I don't think there's anything else that I missed, but there is there is something that goes on here um, that, that, that we're going to have to skip. We're going to go through all the good points. Then we're going to go through that middle chunk of the chapter. And if I missed anything, I apologize, guys, because I'm going to rant about the middle of this chapter. So uh, be prepared. Be prepared for that. Um, the ending part of the chapter is still Big Mom had, of course, took out page one. Now, a lot of people were unhappy with this. I know King of Lightning, I watched his videos on it. I knew that Cole would be extremely irritated by this, extremely pissed off by the, by this. Um, I don't agree. Once again, I did say in my review that the whole mothering mode takes away from... Uh, takes away from what this actually means. Big Mom had no idea that, uh, like, like just, it, it made sense to me. I already explained it in the last review, so I'm not gonna rehash uh, that stuff here. But so far, I'm good with Big Mom being this sort of chaotic menace that can basically flip on a dime depending on how she's feeling. I've always understood that. I've always been good with that. And we knew something would have to break up the alliance. So it just makes sense in this context to me. Anyway, if you want my full thoughts, check the previous review on when Big Mom actually did say, there are still standards in the pirate world, bang, you know, uh, and took out page one. So uh, once again, Ulti, uh, Ulti shows up at this one and it's just like, and of course sh she's just, extremely pissed off like unforgivable I, I can't stand it like how dare you do that to my pay pay big mom and it's like okay so here we go so this is actually sort of a funny sequence because Usopp uh, is saying like let's have big mom to like oh she's back oh shit well let's have uh, let's have big mom take care of her too yeah apparently she's on our side so it's like uh, and, and and Nami even says like uh, 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 like Olin, Big Mom, whatever, uh, you know, that woman over there, she's the actual culprit. She's the one, you know, completely lying through her teeth. Um, and this is where Big Mom, of course, once again, being her chaotic self, turns on a dime. Just because she stopped page one does not mean she hates long nose and cat burglars. Like, you annoying straw hats. When I'm done with her, you're next. We're not friends, right? And then, and then they're just absolutely terrified. So uh, then Nami, of course, flips 180 and goes, oh, ulti -san, we can totally do this. Let's take down Big Mom. <laughs> and then she's like, and then of course, ulti, it's just like, whatever, when I'm done with Big Mom, I'm coming after you. So basically, Nami trying to play both sides of the field and both sides are like, stay out of this. Once I take out her or her, you know, they're both basically saying the same thing. They're like, once I take out Big Mom, once I take out ulti, you guys are next. I hate the straw hat. So, um, it's just, so the tactic, of course, is just run away as fast as you can. Like, just goddamn well run. And this is where Ulti, using some crazy, like, bounce, bounce, speed feats, looks like a Sonic the Hedgehog thing, um, goes in and she completely disappears, like, as uh, Usopp claims, like, oh my god, she, like, she's moving so fast, she disappeared. And then, boom, headbutt right into the side of, um, an Ulti headbutt right into the side of, what's his name, uh, Koma... Komayachi, oh, Komayachi. Anyway, the, the big uh, lion, tiger, dog thingy, um, the Chinese dog thing uh, that they're all riding on gets basically uh, sucker punched into the side. Sort of reminded me of Derriere uh, doing the same thing to Hawk Mom uh, back, uh, back in the day in Seven Deadly Sins. 
when it was good. Anyways, um, and then the last part of the chapter is basically so Ulti's all fired up and just like Komochio, like what? That's that's the name. It's it's Komochio, and uh, basically is like ready. He's like, oh, did you break some bones? Hurry up and die and stuff like that. Now now Tama is of course crying and saying like, don't hurt Komochio, don't hurt Komochio, and this is where. Ulti actually strikes Tama, and I'm glad it's not a headbutt because even though Nami and Usopp, as weak as they are, took a bunch of these headbutts, it's still dangerous as hell. This is a Topi Ropo. This is a dinosaur zone. This is dangerous. Thankfully, only Clauser, I guess, but maybe it, it looks like potentially like there was blood and everything. But she might have just scarred Tama for life because she attacked her with her claws, so she might have scarred Tama's face. And Nami, this is where like. Big Mom's pissed, and we're like, oh shit, what's Big Mom gonna do to Ulti? This is bad. Because the, the thing that Big Mom cares about is not, doesn't really care about the Straw Hats or their escape or anything. Cares about Tama and cares about Okubori Town. Cares about the people that were nice to her. It doesn't take much to please Big Mom. If you were nice to her, she has no reason to hate you. It's, it's, it's very simple. But Big Mom has always had that childlike quality to her that where she th sees things very black and white. She does not see, really see a gray. She's not one for compromises. If she likes something and you take it, destroy it, or do it any harm, she's going to attack you. It's, it's a very basic, it's a childlike mindset, but Big Mom has always been that way. So here we have her, we, we see that with the entirety of her whole cake uh, idea. The idea of her territory, the idea of whole cake, is a very childlike, naive dream. Very much so. Uh, she just happens to be powerful as hell, so she's basically pretty close to achieving it. But either way, um, this is where, as I said, Tama got attacked, and Big Mom is about to completely like go ape shit on Ulti, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, like, because Ulti's like, you did the same thing to my brother. Because Big Mom's like, how dare you do that to little old Tama? I'm going to pulverize you. And this is where it's not, it's not Big Mom. Big Mom actually doesn't get to her first. It's Nami. And this is one definite plus of the chapter is Nami is not, she's not playing that game. She's not running away. She's not crying. This is another moment for Nami in Wano, just like the Luffy will be the king of the pirates. With death looming over her, she could not lie, even though Usopp begged her to do so. She can't lie. She, that's something she won't do. And here, she's like, all right, I'm done running away. And we see Nami looking pissed. She's doing that whole, I love when anime characters do that. They're looking up and then they look down on you with their eyes, like sort of idea. I love that because it's always deadly. It's always like, oh shit. And just attacks her. How dare you hurt Tama? And... Bam, Ulti is lightning blasted, whatever, crash down, bam, boom, and Usopp's like, Nami, what are you doing? We're supposed to be escaping. And Nami's like, no way. I'm going to beat this woman black and blue. I'm going to beat the shit out of her. How dare you hurt a child? And, and so Nami now is having a, no, no. Like, I was good with running away before and, be, and, and playing that game, but you just, you just hit a child. You just hurt Tama. I'm going to beat the shit out of you. And I'm like, okay, that fits Nami's character. Nami's pissed. And I'm like, all right, all right. And Zeus, remember, is running around all amok. And we'll, we'll get to that part. But yeah, so I really liked this section of the chapter, if nothing else. Now, why don't we move on? Why don't we move on to why this chapter, I do not like this chapter. Because all these moments so far, I haven't really said anything bad, have I? I've said, hey, this chapter is this, this chapter is that, oh, this is a good moment for Nami, oh, this is cool with Nekamamushi for the Pedro stuff. You know, there were some, there were some good things. Yamato is apparently going to head to the rooftop. These are all good things, right? Well, for those of you who don't know, I think that Zoro did remarkable feats in this, uh, in this arc. I believe he deserved a few more, nonetheless. But he's done some remarkable feats, especially in that rooftop battle. And even though some people still don't believe it somehow, even though it's printed in black and white, that Zoro officially has Conqueror's Hockey, which makes total sense, given crews like White Beards and Shanks and, you know, uh, uh, the Roger Pirates and all these ones that have multiple Conquerors, some confirmed, some not confirmed, um, you would think, you would think that this would make total sense. But... Some people still don't buy it. But what I assumed when 
Zoro was so badly injured, half of his body is shattered, like the bones are gone and all that stuff. And after his, his very impressive display on the roof, Law was going to take him away. Now, I assumed that maybe this means that uh, Zoro is no longer going to fight Kaido, but now he's going to have to deal with somebody else. That Law is, as a doctor, you know, surgeon of death, he's going to do his crazy api api no me operations, and he's going to basically heal up Zoro as quickly as he can, realizing that Law, realizing that, yeah, right now, this is beyond me, but Zoro managed to do this, that, and the other thing. Law was present when Zoro managed to block the combined attack up for if only for a moment, uh, was able, able to damage Kaido, apparently has Conqueror's Hockey. Zoro and Luffy have been the only two real impressive combatants on the roof. So I would like to think that Law, knowing this, would take the opportunity that, hey, yeah, I might still be able to go out and fight, but it, my energy would be better saved to heal up Zoro and have Zoro be in a, in a, maybe not at full power, but be back in fighting form, similar to what they did for the Red Scabbers, whoever that was. Uh, some people say it's Toki, some say it's Hiyori, some people say it's Anel, um, whatever. But heal up Zoro, and then Zoro might be able to help Marco take out King and Queen. Or maybe go and uh, deal with Big Mom, or something like that. Like, Zoro was going to have more. And then we get the middle. Then we get the middle of this chapter. Where Zoro is completely wrapped up in bandages, like completely like a cross that Sanji, that black leg Sanji is carrying uh, with his favorite person in the world, Moss Head. And I absolutely hate this. I hate this completely because not only, so Law and Zoro and Zeus, they all appear right where Sanji was, was running. So happy coincidence there. So he managed to catch them all because they were all in mid-air sort of idea when Law used his room and, you know, changed position. He was doing it with floating objects and didn't realize. So Zeus is sort of running away uh, from Sanji saying, hey, why aren't you with Nami? Like, wh where are you going, Zeus? And Zeus is still looking for Mama. Um, but here, Law is even saying, like, that's very, very good timing for you, blah, blah, blah. He's like, uh, where did you guys come from and he's like well the room you know that kind of idea so law decides though to hurry like to do whatever he's gonna do he's gonna go do something else because he is thinking that right now he has to go help kid and killer deal with big mom as far as he knows once again i would think law yeah, you're great and everything, but didn't you realize, even with your Gamma Knives and all this, uh, and all these attacks you did, that Zoro and Luffy were the only ones to actually damage Kaido? So maybe your energy as a surgeon, as a medic, would be more helpful here. But no, he basically tells Sanji that he's broken like over 30 bones in his body. Um, and right now, like he's conscious and breathing, but uh, you're going to have to you just bandage him up and stuff. I got to go. And it's like, no law. No. This is a terrible idea. And Sanji even says, like, I'm not Chopper. I'm not a doctor. I, I can't do this sort of idea, right? Like, like, so he ends up bandaging him up really, really stupidly. Just puts bandages literally all over his body other than, like, a little square in his face. And then basically, like, even Sanji, Sanji even acknowledges, like, who put you in this state? And he's like, Kaido and Big Mom. And it's like, well, he's not wrong. And... He, uh, Sanji even acknowledges that, well, I mean, you were two emperors. I mean, yeah, okay. F fair enough that you're in this sorry state right now. Um, so, but Zoro and Sanji, of course, have confidence in Luffy. Uh, Zoro acknowledging that Luffy figured something out when right before they left, and he's definitely going to win. So, uh, Zoro, of course, is, you know, napping here on and off, on and off sort of idea. They run into Kappa and... Uh, yeah, they run into Kappa, Izo, and I, I, I think that's it. I don't think Negum, yeah, because Nekomamushi moved on with somebody else uh, to go find uh, Pero Sparrow. So, um, yeah, and this is where Zoro is basically just spending this time napping and all this stuff. But the problem that I have, for those of you who aren't aware, the big problem I have with this is the fact that you guys are like, well, what's so wrong with this? Okay, do you not like that Sanji is taking care of Zoro or something? Do you not like this, that, that? No, no. What I do not like, and, and I think you guys already know where I'm leading with this, is that Law, you fucking idiot. 
heal Zoro. He is stronger than everybody else in this island. He is, well, not that everybody, but he's out of all of you, out of all of the Straw Hats, out of Kid, Kill, out of all the supernovas there, Zoro is second only to Luffy. If you spend your energy and heal Zoro, better fighting chances. He literally just leveled up and figured out, according to Kaido, confirmed Conqueror's Hockey. If he had, you know, some energy back, if you healed his bones, if you did something, he would be more viable in this war than you. Seriously. Like, so I hate the fact that he ran away, left Sanji to deal with it, but not only am I pissed at Law, which a lot of people are going to give me flack for because uh, a lot of people, Law is their favorite character. But right here, he acts like an idiot. Seriously, he acts like a moron or self-interest, whatever. Um, so, I mean, you could chalk that up to him being a pirate. But Law, uh, once again, Law is not exactly the most piratey pirate either. That, like, I would expect that of Kid, but not Law. And then, this what this means for us is if Law's not going to heal him, and Sanji doesn't seem to be, like like, desperately looking for Chopper then I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that now Zoro in Wano is done. The, the, we aren't going to see Zoro do any other feats, any other badassery for the rest of Wano. I'm sort of starting to feel... Like the uh, like the Sanji fanboys felt in Whole Cake, because Sanji, relatively speaking, did some cool stuff, had some character development, but overall, once again, wasn't really the year of Sanji. Really, the year of Sanji, the arc of Sanji. No, no, I could see how it would be disappointing. And here, after for Zoro fanboys, we were away from Zoro. We've never been away from Sanji. But we've been away from Zoro for quite a number, along with Robin and Frankie and stuff. We finally come back. Zoro's still a badass, doing a bunch of badass things. He's part of the rooftop gang where he belongs. He honestly showed the most number of impressive feats, only next to Luffy, I would argue. And that's because Luffy is figuring out how to incorporate Conqueror's Hockey as armor and hockey and stuff. So we're getting a lot more badass stuff. And the whole Red Rock attack was really cool. But I would argue that Zoro's feats with the single, you know, one sword style, cutting the horn off of Onigashima, blocking the the wave attack from Big Mom and Kaido, uh, then doing the Azora form to finally damage Kaido, even though it didn't knock him off his feet, it still left a permanent scar. The only person to ever scar Kaido was Odin Kazuki himself, and now Zoro has m now managed to scar Kaido. All impressive things, but, but there is still more Wano to be had. There's still more battles going on. Nobody has been permanently defeated yet. He could be helping out Marco against King and Queen, make it a more even fight. Maybe he helps out Nekomamushi with Pero Sparrow. Maybe he teams up with Yamato to take out like some Topi Ropos or something. Either way, Zoro shouldn't be finished here, but this to me, almost confirms it. It would be just a shred. It would be a distant with no evidence hope that somebody comes, heals up Zoro, and then Zoro gets another fight by the end of Wano or gets to still participate. At this point, Zoro is down and out for the rest of the arc. And that is extremely, extremely upsetting. I really don't like that. So no matter the good things of this chapter, I can't like this chapter because it's confirming for me anyways, maybe I'm just a pessimist, but it's confirming for me that Zoro is going to show us no more this arc. Did he get a lot this arc? Yes. But once again, I felt like there was more there. He should, Zoro should not be the first one down. He's literally the first one down. All the other rooftop gang is still fighting. Did he put in the most work of the rooftop gang? You could argue that. Him and Luffy did the most damage. They did the most work. I would argue that. But, once again, he's the first combatant out of the game. The other, the Red Scabbards are still in the game. Even Kiku losing her arm. Uh, Big Mom's still in the game. 
The Commanders are still in the game. The Topi Ropo are still in the game. Everybody else is in the game. All the Straw Hats are still in the game. Zoro being the first one out of both sides is completely ridiculous to me. And I really hate that Oda did this. Unless he's going to turn around and Sanji's going to find Chopper or the person that healed the Red Scabbards and Zoro's going to come back in with a Zora form and like save the day, you know, in Act 4 or something. I don't know. But I, that would be a really, that's thin ice level of hope, guys. So, yeah. Yeah, that's why I don't like this chapter. I can't like this chapter. You, you, you took Zoro out of all the Straw Hats, out of all the combatants here. We have so many characters here. Literally, you took, like, I guarantee you, look, Jack still got up. The Red Scabbards got up. I'm sure we'll see Carrot and Wanda get up before the end of this arc, but this is all but confirming that the first one down is Zoro. Right in the middle of all the fight. Now, now, I, I don't like this. I don't like that at all. What do you guys think? Like, comment, and subscribe. I've said my piece. I don't want to make a 35-minute rant video about it. Um, so I, I tried to narrow it down to only the last, like, 10 minutes of this review. But it really does irk me, guys. It pisses me off. So I won't give a chapter rating because, overall, the chapter is fine. But what it implies pisses me off to no end. So I don't like the chapter. So I would be a very biased uh, to give a rating. It would be a very biased rating. So uh, that's just... And, and it's all due to that one implication, not necessarily the chapter, the structure, and what happened in the chapter itself. So, uh, either way, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell me why you think this chapter was actually good, because I certainly don't. But, looking forward to hearing from you guys. Drink responsibly as always. See you back here next time.